Nevertheless, I live. Man, the Lord, I got this book that I'm reading, and the Lord just, um, the Lord just, <laughs> lock up time. I got this book <laughs> I'm reading, and the Lord just, he just is having his way with my spirit. And as he's having his way with my spirit, every time I see somebody with power, it just, it just, it's, it's illuminating me. It's making me hunger to preach. Every time I went to see a young lady today, didn't know the lady. She's on my. She be on my wake up with Jesus all the time. I see the name all the time. Molly, I see Molly. I see the name all the time. So today, are you see the name on there? On my, I know her. You know her. You don't know her. I do. You don't know Molly. I do know Molly. No, what's her last name? I don't know. Let's say I don't do sports. No, not that Molly. It's another Molly. It's another Molly. What's her last name? What's her last name? Huh? Dunmore. Dunmore. Molly Dunmore. You know, that's the one she, she went well. Yeah, okay, that's her. Yeah, she know what it is. I went to the hospital to see her today. Man, when I walked in there, and I, I was looking for somebody sick. I walked in there and saw so much life, I, 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 I felt like I was going to live forever. That's, that's how much she inspired me. But I want to say, I want to say, never did I know that the lady that I was going to see was always on Wake Up With Jesus with me all the time. I see Molly Dunmore, Molly Dunmore, almost all the time. I haven't seen her lately, but there was a time I saw her almost every day. And so today she really inspired me to preach this message tonight. And um, I need you to turn your Bibles, if you do, if you will, turn your Bibles to, turn your Bibles to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. Somebody say Galatians. Galatians. Chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I live. Glory be to God. Nevertheless, I live. Wouldn't that be a beautiful place to be? In other words, why are you worry? Because you don't make the other things more important. What is the most important? Can, can I have a good time without living? Can I, can I take care of my mama without living? Can I take care of my brother without living? Can I tell my enemy off without living? Can't do nothing unless you Hello, can. I got to live. got to live first. That's right. For anything. So what I'm doing is Amen. I'm making all these other things more important than the main thing. Living. First lady said something tonight. She said, keep the main thing. The main thing. Where's my, where's my Bible? I got a Bible. Where, where, you know, my, where, look at my office and bring my Bible because my pad for some reason going crazy. Nevertheless, what do I gotta read? Read from it. New Living Translation. Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20. Oh, I got it. It's right here. Galatians 2 and 20. I got it. I got it. That's what it says. It says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. I live in this earthly body. I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave himself and gave himself for me. My old self has been crucif crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. So now, as long as I'm sitting here concerning myself with life without God, I don't know life. And once I know life with God, there's no way I do not know life forevermore. I could just stop right there. Nevertheless, my lights are off. Huh. I don't know about y'all, but mine been off before. But nevertheless, guess what? I didn't die because my light was off. My girl, 
girlfriend left me when I was my probably when I was 10th grade, my first girlfriend left me. I thought I was gonna die. But nevertheless, come on. Somebody cussed me. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody I don't call me. Somebody cussed me out. I didn't cuss them like that. Why? Nevertheless, what I what? Hello? Why are y'all over exaggerating the things that don't matter? Hello, you know it'll give you the right grab. It's not that important. Nothing important. No matter what you do to me, you cannot take my life. Come on. I'm with you. You can get a gun and put six bullets in me. And if God said, let him live, I will live. You cannot take my life. Stay right there. But here we are, walking around the walking dead. <laughs> Thanks somebody picking on me. You the walking dead. You just straight up walking dead. Cause you giving your life to this man, that woman, this woman, that man. Can't nobody take your life. Y'all so caught up and, and crazy to this ridiculous. Come in, come in, let. Come in. Let. Oh, she on Facebook. Come on, come on. Come on, mom. Come on, brother. Come in. Can't nobody take your life. Come on, can't nobody take your life. Me and his brother can have a knockdown fight. We can have a knockdown drag out fight. He, we can have a knock. He, he, he can drop me to the ring and we put these hands. He can put these hands on me and he can put me, he can beat me to the ground. But guess what? If we leave him and I see his car going to a lake, I'll jump in and try and save the one that just beat me. Amen. Why? Because I understand that all I want to see, because I'm living, I want to see everybody else living. That's why you so caught up when somebody dies. Because you feel, huh? I'm going to look this way. You sit down because I don't want you to hit me. <laughs> That's why you feel so messed up when you see a good person die. Because you feel like it should have been you instead of that good person. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 That's why when your grandmama died, you say, oh, Lord. That's why when uh, your sister died, you say, oh, you feel like, why you didn't take me? I'm a sinner. Hell, it was a sinner too. Oh, my God. You just didn't know they sinned, but you know the magnitude of yours. That's right. That's true. That's all. That's true. No matter what goes on, nevertheless, you are going to live so get rid of the devil ruling all matter areas in your life. Amen. Devil ruling all matter areas of your life. What, that, what is that, anybody? Drama. Get rid of the drama. Yes, sir. I am dying because drama is my life and life is not my life. Oh, y'all don't believe this, man. I mean, I got people crying and worried about stuff that they got no control over. I had somebody call me today. I had a brother call me today, and it was not her husband. A brother called me today and said, um, um, Deacon Richard was supposed to do something for me last night. I said, Deacon Richard was on assignment. I said, he was with Bishop last night. We was at the restaurant to take care of some business. And then I said, but Deacon Richard had to go to work earlier this morning. And they said, well, well Deacon Richard shouldn't have told me he was going to do it if he didn't, wasn't going to do it. And I told him, I said, look, I'm playing golf, but Deacon Richard shouldn't have told me. I said, well, Deacon Richard had to do some things at the church. Deacon Richard had to do something else. Deacon Richard had to do this. And Deacon Richard was with me last night. And Deacon Richard didn't have a chance. Well, Deacon Richard should have thought about me. I'm in jail. Fool, you put yourself down. <laughs> 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 Tell the truth. You're going gangster. Come on now. Tell the truth. Tell him. Man, Deacon Richard. Because you in jail and he ain't come bring you your commissary money. Yeah. I had to deal with that today. Wow. Still got good spirit. <laughs> but guess what? Even though you ain't got no commissary, what? You still living? Nevertheless, you are alive. So you know what? Y'all stop letting people manip manipulate you with their feelings like they going to die if they don't get you to do what they want you to do. Thank you, Jesus. I hear you. I receive it. You hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, and my, my wife and telling I used to just run. She wake me up two o'clock in the morning. I be laying her sleep. Oh, uh, uh, uh. 
Oh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> and you know what I do? That's my trophy. I jump up and I run and I get that water and I come back and I lay right down. Hey, baby, what's up? It's hot in here. Turn it down. And I jump up. I jump up. Why? Why do I jump up? Huh? It's not that she's controlling me. When you really love somebody, you want a whole bunch of times when you didn't feel like doing something. You did it. That keeps you in a good place with them if they leave you. See, we so messed up because when people asked us to do something, we gave my flesh instead of the Spirit of God. But the thing about it, if there are times where God said, give them my spirit and let them go do it themselves, and then they're going to they gonna, they gonna threaten you. And, and you know, and, and this is when they're really trying to manipulate you. Huh? When they start pointing out what they did for. Oh, oh God. Uh oh. Yes, uh oh. Don't go there. Remember what I did? Yeah, hello. Oh, if you ever tell me what you did for me, I don't, I'm gonna lock the door. Y'all forget, I ain't gonna do nothing. Cause right now, that, that's manipulation 101. Oh yeah. Do yeah. you ever go to tell me, well Bishop, you need to do this cause you know Bishop, I put the gas in the van the last time and I wanna drive the van as long as I want to and because I put the gas, you need to, man, get out of my face. <laughs> Nevertheless, get over the impact of personal feelings. Yes. Personal feelings will impact you in a way, and know what they're doing? Anytime you're being led by your feelings, anytime you're being led by your feelings, that somebody being used by the enemy, y'all hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. You talk. Anytime you're being led by your feelings, that somebody using the enemy, the enemy using to pull you out of a place where life matters. To pull you out of a place where life matters. Right. So now, what is living? That's the key. Nevertheless, I live. So now, I didn't get my way, but I'm still living. Are you or are you not? Yeah. I'm still living, yes. Huh? Yes. Are you mad? Because you didn't get your way? Oh, you ain't. Next time they ask me to do something, I ain't gonna do it. Huh? You ain't you ain't bringing in enough, so you ain't gonna get enough. Uh oh. Huh? See, as long as you have made plans about what's gonna happen because you didn't get what you want, you ain't living, you waiting on a chance to hurt somebody. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Y'all hear this? Yes. You ain't living. Anytime you got plans or you got an agenda because you didn't get what you want, I know I was the only child. I, 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 what well, you didn't give me, I, you didn't give me me. I don't worry, don't worry, no worry. We good, yeah. But guess what? What happens when you stop living? When you start having all these agendas, you oh, you don't crack the door. You open the door wide open for Satan. Why? Because now I cannot focus on the things I need to focus on because every time I see you, I'm just hoping you slip. Uh -oh. And while I'm focusing on you, I'm not living. When you make me mad, I've got to display the character, thank you Holy Ghost, of life. You better hear the word of God. What is life? Missionary Sierra, what is life? Missionary, want to tell you what is life? Life is being in the presence of God no matter what. I cannot live forevermore without, unless I'm in the one who created the evermore. But he is. Yes, sir. And see, that's my whole dilemma. That's why I don't get mad at people no more. I'm so afraid of dying out. See, everybody's worried about his will. I'm in his will. I got an 
inheritance. Heaven is my inheritance. I've been written in the will of God, but I might be delayed if I die outside his presence. I hear the word of God. Oh, right. I'm in his will. That's a guarantee. Somebody say, that's a guarantee. That's a guarantee. Yeah, we're playing spades. Just a guarantee joke right huh? That's a guarantee. So, I'm, I cannot afford to get upset with you because in the midst of being upset with you, guess what? The life angel might come. That's right. In the midst of me being upset with you, if the life angel come and he said your life on this side is over, now I got to wait to start my new life because I was not in the presence Amen. of the life giver. Amen. Amen. Y'all hear this? Yes, sir. So what I'm trying to say is, it's not whether or not somebody else lives. You can't generate life if you're not living with the one who gives life. Well, God says, speak life in the dead situation. If you are upset, you are also dead. You tell me one thing, yep. and I'm two of them. When did Jesus get mad? One time. One time. When you mess with his father's business, not his business. When you mess with his Father's business. So now Jesus gets mad at you when you won't let him come in and clean up the temple for the father to come in. Because your your house is the father's house. Y'all got this? Yes, sir. So now I must understand, no matter what goes on in my life, nevertheless, y'all listen to what it says. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I live. Why why? This is why, this is why. My old self was crucified. With Christ. Can you acknowledge that? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. How do I acknowledge that? I don't see pain no more. I don't see shame. I don't see agony. I don't see pain. All I see is life. Bishop, why do you, why you kept dealing with me? All I ever saw in you was life. Bishop, why you just won't let the brother go? Because you know what? If he's breathing, the life giver says he yet has a chance to live with him forevermore. Amen. That's not my call. Amen. But y'all want to manipulate people. Y'all want to tell people they're not men and women of God because of what they're doing. How can you how can you say what is and you didn't create it? That's right. Come on, bitch. That's right. How can you say what is? Yeah, no, when God's when, what, what he said, my old self has been crucified. It no longer, it no longer, it is no longer I who live. So, in other words, no matter what, if I receive, what, what did God say? The only work I require of you is what? Anybody remember that? Believe in the one that I sent. He said, don't, that, all that other stuff don't even matter. If you believe in the one that I sent, guess what? I never could figure it out until just now. If I believe in the one that, I, that, that he sent, he sent Jesus for a purpose. Mercedes, why did he send Jesus? Why did he send Jesus, Missionary Keisha? He sent Jesus for a purpose. So if I believe in the one that I, he sent, he was sent for me to bring me home. Glory to if God. I don't believe in the one that was sent, I'll never get to the Father. Because right. right. I think he just like everybody else. He just playing with my feelings. He said, nevertheless, just believe. I don't care what you did. Just believe. Yes. I don't care what the doctor said. Just believe. Yes, sir. Man. I don't care where you went. Just believe. Man, I wish y'all had heard the wake up of Jesus this morning. I laid my whole life out this morning. I just laid it out. I just laid it out. And I never realized. What, what, what was it? Isaiah 6? I'm going to show y'all something. just want to show you one thing. Very important. And I'm out of here. Y'all listen to this. Yes, sir. You don't even know when God, when you answered the call. You don't even know when you answered the call. Most people realize they answer the call when they were in church. But y'all know where my altar was? I ain't realized it this morning. Who was going to wake up with Jesus? Did you, you didn't, you just know that? Do y'all know where my altar was?
altar was. I kept going to the church, going to the altar. Lord, deliver me. I kept going to the church, going to the altar. Lord, deliver me. And nothing wasn't happening. I wasn't, I wasn't getting killed. I wasn't getting beat up. But I was always in fear of getting killed and getting beat up. Because of where I was. Y'all hear this? Watch this. I want you to hear this. I mean, and when you hear this, it's going to change your life. Especially after that sermon yesterday. Take this with you. Take this with you. It was Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. Just listen to this. I want you to listen to, listen to what, what Isaiah said. A man of God. It was in the year of King um, Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and a train of his robe would fill, fill the temple. Meaning what? When it said train, it looked like people, right? But no, what I mean? I'm like a long gown. But he was saying, I got a train to bring people with me. He said, attending him were a mighty seraphim. Each has six wings. Two wings to cover their faces, two wings to cover their feet, and two wings to flow. Two wings to not see themselves, two wings not to see where they were going, and two wings to fly out of trouble. This, this is the guarantee of God. This is why I say, nevertheless, you live. You know, this brings right to it. They were calling each other, holy, 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 is the Lord of heaven's armies. That's the key. When you become a servant, you're part of God's army. No, when you become a part of the army, now you're living in the nevertheless, I live. Yes. This ain't no, ain't no ordinary army. Amen, Bishop. Listen to what the word of God said. The whole world is filled with his glory. The voices shook the temple to its foundation, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then, you know what, they couldn't see where they were going. They didn't know where they were going, but they were glorifying God. Yes. Can't see where you're going, don't know what's going on in your life, don't know what you're doing, but you're going to glorify God. Watch it now. Then I said, it's all over. I'm doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among people with filthy lips. So in other words, I, I, I got filthy lips, and I ain't going to never get better, because ain't nobody around me trying to get better, because everybody got filthy lips. We all sinners. Watch what he said. Then one of the servants flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. In other words, your hottest place. A place you never could imagine that you would go to. Now some people, it is the altar in the church. <laughs> your hottest place. Watch this. He said he the coals, your, this place was so hot, he had to get the coals with tongs. He touched my lips and he said, see, the coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven forever. So if Isaiah could see this before Jesus, how you can't see it after Jesus, this man said his sins were forgiven even before grace and mercy came to the world. And here we are, we know grace and mercy, and we can't accept the fact that the sin, or we can say our sin is gone, but we're going to remind everybody else it is. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Watch. He says, then, he says, it's all over. Yet I have seen the king, the lord of heaven's army. There's that army. Then one of the servants flew to the burning coal. He said, then I heard the lord asking. Now watch this. I heard the Lord asking after he delivered me. See, y'all want, y'all want the manifestation of deliverance in the natural. You got a whole lot of people who, who, who look delivered but are not delivered. You need the manifestation of being delivered in the spirit. Because when I'm when I'm delivered in the spirit, I got a nevertheless I live spirit. Yes. Y'all see this? Amen. And you cannot get that until you until you like I told you yesterday until you go to another stratosphere. Yes. Come here, mother. Let me show y'all something. This little lady ain't never been to jail. Mother ain't never been to jail. Huh? She, she don't want to go to jail. 
Now has she done some things to go to jail? <laughs> Are you looking that way, mother? It's the mother of the church I'm talking about. But the bottom line is this. That's not her fingerprint. That's not her predestined journey. That's not her purpose. All right? Yes, sir. Now go, go, mother. So here is another person who had, who didn't want to go to jail, scared of jail, scared of going to prison. But remember that hot place, huh? It's one thing for the for the turban to come, turban to come and put it put it on your tongue, on your lips, and say you're not a sinner. But when you are called of when you are called, Chosen and called, called and chosen, God won't bring the, He won't bring the deliverance to you. He'll make you go to the deliverance. Wow. Y'all hear me? Amen. See, some of y'all, like like my, my son right now, Mr. MT, he fine because but he is chosen beyond a lot of us because he he was called to go into the deliverance, not the deliverance coming to him. So now, watch this. Here I am. I hate to have to do this up. Everything I ever dreamed for, everything I went to college for, everything I went to college for, everything I worked hard for, sitting right there. Sitting right here. I mean, all the, all the assets you could ever dream of sitting right here. I mean, sitting right here. And I'm not playing. Uh, sitting right here on the left side. But it looked right because I didn't get my money illegally. I didn't get this big house illegal. I didn't get the other big house. I looked right because it was right there. Yeah. It looked right because I was not selling drugs, making the money. It was all legal money. So it looked right. <sighs> but God was sure to say, give him as much as you want. And he will still obey me. Mm -hmm. all right. mm -hmm. Give him as much as he wants. And when you obey God on that level, no matter what you, whatever you go through, you got the confidence you're gonna live through it. So, so here I am. Here I am. Got all this sitting over here. I mean, they made fifteen. The car I was driving, there was only they made fifteen hundred of them a year, and I was the only black man in Orlando with one of them. You hear me? That's how. That's the way I was, the little XLR. But watch this, all this sitting here. And I, here I am, tore up from the floor. Y'all called me rich. I thought I was broke. Because I knew, I, I realized it was more than life than money. Yeah. I realized it was more than life than houses. I realized it was more than life than being successful in the business world. Yeah. And all that was sitting there, Deke. And then one day I was just so fed up with all of that. And everything that came with it. My children, my, my wife, not this wife. The, 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 the business. Fed up. Why? Because all everybody, when you got money and you got a genuine heart, you're gonna be pimp coming and going. You hear me? And you can't help, you can't help but be pimp because that's what you are. God gave it to you. See, because I'm a natural giver. So even as I give in church, I also gave in the world. So people pimp me out there. So one day, so I just, I just, I just, I, I self-medicated. I just self-medicated. I know I was being used. I didn't want to see myself being used. So I just, I just, I loaded myself with cocaine. I loaded myself with marijuana. I loaded myself with, I love that Hennessy. <laughs> and then one day I just got tired of the lifestyle. And, I'm, and I'm, I was hoping that something bad would happen. But God wouldn't let nothing bad happen. My God, my God, you hear me? Yeah. You have a hope? Would you save me from me? Amen. Hoping something bad would happen? This when you know no matter what, nevertheless you will live. Yes. Yes. So what I did, yes. I came out I, I came out one night, and I was headed to the big house, and I, I, look, I got right down the street. I looked at the house, and I, I realized the ingredients that was in it. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, I'd rather be in jail. And I turned my car around. I drove to the one of God and the police department. 
I say, I'm, I'm, I've been buying drugs, I've been using drugs, would y'all please arrest me? Did you hear me? It's one thing for them to grab you and force you to go to jail. It's another thing to ask to go. Because you know, wherever you were, there was something more you needed and you wasn't going to get it in those things. If I had not asked for the jail, I would never have found God on the... I, see, I don't just need God. The demons that were at me, I needed God and some more God and some more God. I need God. I need all that God had to offer. But when I walked into that jailhouse, this is what people don't understand. Nothing happened to me because nothing could happen to me because God knew one day I was going to give my life to him like that. That's right. So most people think their altar is here. My altar was walking into the one of God police department and standing at that counter and that man said, I ain't never seen nothing like this in my life. Wow. Eight months later, I was in I was, I, was, I, was in, I was in Orange County Jail. Two nights after I was there, never taught Bible study in my life. Two nights after I was there, I started teaching Bible study. Start seeing brothers coming there. And I'm telling you, I was there for three months. And everybody that went to the Bible study, no matter what their cases were, they went home. You hear this? I'm saying all this to say this. If nothing had happened to me when I was not with God, how in the world something will happen when I'm with God? See, y'all looking, y'all looking for, y'all looking for a manifestation of the power of man, and you're missing the manifestation of the power of the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. You hear me? Yes, sir. You better get some confidence that you know what? You gotta show God I will do something that I don't want to do for you. I will be uncomfortable if I have to be uncomfortable. I will take what I have to take. I will I will get knocked out if I have to. But you know what? I'm going to love what you tell me to love. I'm going to hold on to what you tell me to hold on. And I'm going to show you, God, you know what? I'm going to do anything for you. Glory to God. Glory to your name. I'll take it for you, Lord. Glory to God. You made my wife mad at me yesterday. <laughs> Did you? That was, that was purposeful. <laughs> and then, and then she, did, she said, well, I think I'm going to bet on that. <laughs> Me and my daughter hung out yesterday. We just hung out too long. <laughs> too long. <laughs> well, they, they saw, they, she knew how she get. She was at my house and all that time. We, I hung out with the four, four sisters from the church. Too long, she didn't care who it was, she let it go. I'm your wife. <laughs> she don't play. But I just said this to say this, and I'm through. If God told you to do something that one time you thought you would be too ashamed to do, what would you do? Huh? Do you know the shame that you bring to God when He got to save you from your sinful self? If he ignored that shame, why can't you ignore the one that ignored the shame for you? Amen. Huh? Sure. But you gotta wait on. See, everything is. What, what's the key element to Jesus? I'm gonna tell y'all something the key element to Jesus. It's not saving your soul, it's the timing. Amen. It's the timing in which your soul is to be saved. See? This, 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 this is my daughter. See, show y'all something. Here she is, happily married, but she looked like anything but. Y'all got this? Here she is, happily married. She out here, I just said, you call that happiness? Yeah, I don't want none of it. But here she is, happily married, but you call it anything but. Why? Because she remember what the word says. Two verses said what God has put together. Let no man put on them. And you just know when something fit. Yes. Huh? Yes. See, just because it fit don't mean the timing is right. That's right. 
See, if God, if God let them love like they're supposed to love before they are fully developed, huh? They'll be spoiled. Amen. Amen. So he had to make sure there was separation and, and until, until Jesus said, Jesus came and gave them Jesus timing, meaning in Jesus timing, he will connect and correct. Y'all would hear me? In Jesus timing, he will connect and correct. But somebody got to have the discipline to say, you know what? Uh -uh, it ain't our time right now. Even though we married, it ain't our time right now. <laughs> Takes a gift to Keisha. You got it, baby. <laughs> Y'all hear me? You got to understand that Jesus set, they set time by Jesus. That means everything in, in, in when Jesus came into your life, he began to wind down your wrong and set up your right. He began the clock, see, he began to unwind in order to. Wine. You better hear this. You hear this? He didn't begin to unwind. Y'all understand? Huh? Can I help y'all? Can I help y'all? He got rid of the, the rock gut and gave you some rose. <laughs> some young people don't know what rock gut is. MD2020. He got rid of the MD2020. It's a wine. Hard wine. It's a poor man's wine. Yeah. It's, it's the MD20. You don't, you, don't, you don't know, you don't want to know. I promise you. So he began to unwind in order to wine. Y'all got it? So he said, I'm going to get you off the, off the rock, the, the MD, and I'm going to get you some red rose. Y'all hear this? But you got it in order to enjoy it. You got to know that nevertheless, no matter what somebody say, no matter what somebody do, I'm going to live. Amen. How many people know Jesus has been in their life? Amen. That means you're in the New Testament of your life. Amen. Am I right? Yes. Now, if God didn't kill you in the Old Testament, why are you worrying about stuff now? Amen. Why, if he, he didn't kill you before Jesus, why are you worried about Jesus didn't come that you may die. He came to add to your life. Amen. So God, y'all still worried about when you're going to die, what's going to happen, who going to shoot me. If they shoot you, they ain't did never transition you. Amen. What? Death, like I told you the other day, there is no more death angel. There's a life angel. A one that takes you from life to life. To life. Faith to faith, glory to glory, life to life. You better hear the word of life. life. Huh? It's no more death. It's life to life. Amen. The child think about life to death. Oh my God, I hope she was good enough to go to heaven. She wouldn't have died, left this world unless she was prepared. He wouldn't have left this world unless he was prepared. They're going from life to life. He told you faith to faith, glory to glory, and Jesus left this life and went to a better life. And so as I close, as I softly Isaiah, as I close, watch this. Now, you, now it'll make sense to you. Now it will make sense to you. Woman God, read that for me. You got it? I can go back to it real quickly. Woman, watch this. Watch this. Now it's gonna make a whole lot of sense as I read it, because I need I need you to I need you to feel it as I read it. Y'all ready? Galatians 2 and 20. Now listen to it. Now it says, now it says, my old self has been crucified. It has suffered. But it didn't die. Huh? Why didn't it die? Watch what it says. It is no longer I who live, but the one who came into my life to make sure I live. It is no longer I who live. I got I, in my Old Testament, I think I got through it. I may have and I may not. But when I met Jesus, he brought the assurance that I should live forever. Yes. It's no longer I that do it. Watch what he says. He says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Who did God not kill? Who did God make sure they lived on the other side of death? Christ. 
So now that you are in the New Testament of your life, <laughs> nevertheless, because of Christ you shall live. Amen. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. Amen. And when he said, so I live in this earthly body by trusting in God who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Gave himself for me. Pastor Joyce. So what he's saying is, God came and turned himself. He said, he said Jesus was who in the flesh? God in the flesh. Huh? And now he said, he came and gave himself for me. He said, when Jesus get through with you, they'll say, you know what? If I ain't know no better, I said that mental submission was God in the flesh. He gave himself so you could look like him. He came looking like you, gave himself up so you can look like him. And what is it that he, what do we look like? We look like death. But when he gave himself and made us look like him, he lived forever. So he came. He said, I'm going to give you what you know, death. Then I'm going to give you what you want, life forever. You better hear the word of God. Hello, somebody. I'm going to give you what you know, death. Then I'm going to give you what you want, life forevermore. So now, let all that other insignificant stuff go. Yes. No matter what goes on, you had two wrecks, they stole your purse, they charged up your credit card, but I still see you living. That's right. With your you're not see, if you're not happy, you're not living. You're waiting on an opportunity to get somebody back. That's not life. That's right. That's, right. Amen. That's not reflecting God. That's right. God, I can't see him I can't see God himself in that behavior. Wow. Y'all got that? Yes, sir. Nevertheless. I still live. Amen. Ain't that rich? Yes. Amen. Nevertheless. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy I'm Lord. telling you, it is real, saints. I told, I told Pastor Nisa something the other day. I just got to wait on God to give it to you. God. Thank you, rich. 70 years. God said, I promise you three score and 70. We're going to go. I promise you three score and seven, Three score and 10. What is that, 70? So that means we're going to be on this earth 70 years. He said, anybody who lives over 70 is just graving. Huh? Right? Anybody who lives over 70 ain't here. They go, huh? I'll explain to you one day. And anybody who died before 70 is still here. If God said, I gave you 70 years on this earth, if he did not do it, the whole Bible would be a lie. I'm going to explain that to you one day. The whole Bible would be a lie. Because you can find one lie in the Bible, you can make the whole Bible a lie. He said, I promise you three scores and ten. Three scores and ten. Think about that. And stay tuned. Stay tuned. Tell you, stay tuned. That's deep right there. And, 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 and real. Now, he said, did he promise us seventy years? Huh? He didn't say. He did not say. Watch this. He didn't say in the flesh or celestial. He just said you're gonna be here seventy years. <laughs> Y'all better hear this. Most people. Very few people talk about John F. Kennedy now, but there was a season, even after he died, they still had high priority about John F. Kennedy, even Martin Luther King. Y'all notice? He over 70 now, they don't talk about him like they used to. They might talk about him, but they don't reverence him like they used to. You see him, Mother? I'll show it to you. Stay tuned, like Paul Harper said, for the rest of the story. God bless everybody. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We give you all the end and all the glory. We thank you tonight, Lord, because we understand nevertheless, 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 no matter what the drama, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what is said or not said, no matter what is done or not done, if I 
have the power to speak. I will I will speak with joy. I will speak with I will speak with peace. I will speak with the love of God. Indicating I am still yet in his presence. And when I'm in the presence of God, there is nothing but the life of God, the life giver. Oh my God, I thank you right now for every saint in the sanctuary. I thank you for them not counting it robbery to come out and hear that they have been equipped by God to live forevermore with him. He said, I came to look like you in a manner in which you know. Live to die. And then now that you know me, you know you live to live. From faith to faith. From glory to glory. From life to life. Why? Because God said so. And that does it. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. amen.